Lindsay Benko personifies the attributes of a true champion. Throughout her career, she has not only demonstrated her competitive excellence, but continues to motivate and inspire her teammates to achieve the highest levels of athletic accomplishment. Lindsay began her illustrious journey as an age group standout, where she was an All-American and one of Sports Illustrated's faces in the crowd. Over her career, she has continued to enjoy success at every level. Benko is one of the top freestylers competing today. She holds the world record in both the 200 and 400 freestyle short course meters. Lindsay is a seven-time U.S. national champion, five-time NCAA champion, a 21-time All-American, and has won six career Pac-10 titles. In 2000, she joined America's Best and represented the USA at the Olympic Games, winning a gold medal as a member of the victorious 800 freestyle relay. Demonstrating incredible resilience and perseverance, Lindsay bounced back from a career-threatening injury in 2001 to perform some of the best swimming in her career, breaking record after record. Instrumental to Lindsay's success is her coach, Mark Schubert. Mark is a seven-time Olympic coach, eight-time Coach of the Year, and has led USC to three NCAA team titles and 44 individual titles. Now let's meet Lindsay and Mark. Lindsay, I know that goals have been a very big part of your success. Will you talk a little bit about how you approach goals and how they work for you? Well, I've been setting goals since I was six. Um, my very first swim meet, I remember sitting down with my dad. We would set my very first goal, and so he's really the one that taught me how to set goals. I set goals for myself in practice all the time, you know, whether it's a simple goal of just keeping up with the boys or whether it's a more detailed goal of, you know, negative splitting or even pacing my sets and stuff like that. So I think they're very important because it's a way to reward yourself in the end, and it's a way to make swimming fun, and for me, that's what swimming's all about. What happens to you if you don't reach a goal? It's taken me sometimes three or four years before I actually reached a goal that I wanted to reach. You, know, you have to find the fine balance between setting a goal that's a little too hard and a goal that's a little too easy. And once you find that balance, you'll be able to reach your goals. And when you reach them, it's, it's a great feeling, and then you just take a step back and set a new one. I know that you've had some challenges and some disappointments. Could you talk about what those disappointments were and how you handled them. Obviously the biggest disappointment for me was the year after the Olympics in 2001 when I went to Japan and ended up breaking my knee. I thought you know maybe my career could have been over. I just didn't know what to expect. I had to believe in myself before I could allow myself to act you know to succeed and coming back a month later winning a national title going to goodwill games and winning a title there you know that gave me the belief in myself that i needed that i kind of feel like i lacked in my career so you can always learn from disappointments and for me i think it might have actually turned out to be for the best lindsay i've always been impressed with your dedication to perfection particularly when it comes to technique Swimming has changed so much since I started swimming 20 years ago. The ideas that I was taught are not the ideas that I use now. When you go to the Olympics, everybody has the same amount of talent. It's a matter of who's going to work harder and who's going to have the better technique that's going to get your hand on the wall first. And how do you apply what you learn about your technique and what you should change to practice? Well, that's what you have practice for. You know, you have practice to work on your technique and perfect your stroke, your swimming. You have to practice it in order to make it perfect in a race. The more you practice it, the easier it's going to be when you race. Lindsay, I know you've been a part of some great teams, and in most cases, you've been a captain of those teams. Can you talk a little bit about teamwork and how that's helped your success? I think a lot of people look at swimming as being a non-related team sport. You know, it's an individual-based sport where I look at swimming as being very team-oriented. If I had to be at practice at 5 o'clock in the morning and I had to do it by myself, it's so much easier to do it when you know that your teammates are going to be there. You know, I wouldn't be as successful as I am without a lot of people's help. 
I know there's many days that you spend five hours a day at the pool, but I'm sure you have other interests. What do you do when you get away from the pool? I like to do things that really have nothing to do with swimming. You know, anything that's going to kind of take my mind off of being at the pool. And I think that's definitely one of the reasons that 20 years later I'm still doing it because I don't put too much focus on it. I focus on it when I'm at the pool, when I'm doing my weight training, when I'm doing everything that I need to do to become a better swimmer. But when I'm away from the pool, let's not think about it. So Lindsay, everybody has their favorites. Tell us what your favorites are. Like my favorite color is probably red. Uh, I love to read, so I have many favorite books. Uh, I think they start with Memoirs of a Geisha, going all the way to um, The Invisible Circus, you know, The Alchemist. Um, I love going to the movies. You know, movies is one thing that, that kind of keeps my mind off of swimming. Uh, favorite TV shows include Alias and Friends. Tell us what your favorite music is. <laughs> I listen to lots of different types of music, but before I race, I have this specific kind of music. I like to listen to 80s music. It, it makes me smile, gets me pumped up before I race. <laughs> Lindsay, I know that your views on nutrition and the importance of nutrition in your sport has changed. I think when I made the team in 2000, it was wonderful. I felt very, very fortunate to be there. But being there helped me learn from some of the greatest athletes around. People like Dara Torres, Amy Van Dyke, and Jenny Thompson, you know, from those girls that do everything in their life to be a gold medalist to be an Olympian and I kind of had to take a step back and reevaluate lots of parts of my life but most importantly my nutrition and now I feel like I'm a lot more careful about what I eat and focus more every day on what it takes to be an Olympian. If someone had a concern about their nutrition how would you recommend that they approach it? I think the most important thing is to not deprive yourself of things. I drink coffee, I do eat, I eat french fries, but I don't eat those every day. You have to be able to balance it, but you also have to be able to give yourself a craving every once in a while. And I think that that kind of makes it a little easier for yourself and for your mind and for your body. So it's important to have fun, even with nutrition. Yes, <laughs> fun in all aspects of life. <laughs> That was a big 50 by Benko, she's a powerful swimmer. This is Lindsay's sprint stroke, six feet kick. She breathes every two strokes. She breathes on the right, because that's her best side to breathe. We're just briefly going to talk about the actual stroke and the technique and what I think about when I'm swimming. Here we're looking at the hands. Now the very first thing that I think about when I swim my freestyle, when my hands get in front of me, is I want to point my fingertips down towards the bottom of the pool. That way my fingertips are always pushing back all the way through my stroke, all the way past my hips. I want to make sure that my elbow is high throughout my stroke. Watch how high my elbow is the entire time through my stroke. Fingertips are pointing down all the way through until I finish. Make sure you want to finish all the way back behind your hips. Face looking down, I'm not looking up. I could probably look my head even down even further towards the bottom of the pool. When I take my breath, I try to keep my shoulder as close to my head as possible so there's no space in between. I'm breathing with one goggle in the water. Watch how I finish my stroke all the way through on both sides in the rotation of my hips even on the side that I'm not breathing on. My hips open up on both sides. Again, I'm trying to stay as close to the top of the surface of the water as I can. I'm trying not to sink down, especially when I take my breath. If you notice on my kick, my kick is very narrow. It's very close to the surface. Here we are looking at the kick and looking how close my kick is together. Looking how I'm using lots of knee bend, but not too much. I'm getting most of my power coming from the bottom part of my leg, and especially for my ankle flexibility. 
My flexibility in my ankles is really important no matter what stroke you're doing, especially in freestyle, I'm getting lots of power from my ankles. Flexibility is really helpful in the freestyle kick just like it is in all kicks. Bingo has the world record, a short course version of this race. This is Lindsay's 400 stroke, two beat kick freestyle with alternate breathing. Here we are with a two beat kick, which is what I use most when I practice and in my 400. It's the same kind of technique that was with the six beat kick. And what I want to think about on this is keeping my kick very narrow. I don't want to have a wide kick. I also try to think about getting my heels on top of the water with every kick. I'm going to get a more powerful kick. Still using my ankle flexibility quite a lot. But I still have to position my body so it's, again, on top of the water. I don't want to be sinking too far down, and when you're not kicking as hard, sometimes you have a tendency to do that. Lindsay uses a two-beat kick for the 400. She has a higher tempo. Her arms are at a higher stroke rate. Two kicks per cycle. When I use the two beat kick, my arm tempo is a little bit faster than when I use a six beat kick because I'm relying a lot more on my arms. So you want to make sure that you don't forget to do all the proper technique even though your arm's moving faster. Fingertips going all the way down, pushing all the way through. When I take my stroke, I'm still keeping my hands all the way, finishing my catch all the way back past my hips. When I take my breath, I'm making sure that I am so flat on top of the water. And when I do a two-beat kick, I breathe to both sides, not just to my right side. I bilateral breathe, and so I want to make sure that I'm still rotating my hips, both from side to side. Again, keeping my shoulder as close to my ear as possible. Finishing my stroke, let's see my hands are all the way back here by my hips, and I'm looking down towards the bottom of the pool. See a nice line all the way through. When Lindsay uses a two-beat kick, she is very aware of her body balance. The most important thing in swimming is your streamline. It is the fastest point that you'll ever be in your entire race when you push off the wall, when you dive in on your start. Now it's very important to streamline not only that you have one hand on top of the other, but you're squeezing your ears. You want to make sure that it's a nice straight line no matter what position that you're in. We want to get the shaft of her arrow or her silhouette as tight as possible. So she keeps her line from her fingertips through her toes and then she gets as tight as she can, particularly here through her lats, and rounds her back slightly. The diameter as small as possible. Not only are her hands covering each other, but her forearms are as well. As tight and narrow as possible. focus on the start. For me, it's not one of my specialties and not one of my strong points, but I'm still working on it and trying to make it better each time I get in the water. The first thing you want to do is when you're behind the blocks, and in my case, that's kind of when I decide that I need to settle down and start thinking about my race. And then I prepare myself to swim the best I possibly can at that given time. So when I get up on the blocks, I take the deep breath, I'm nice and focused on my race. I position my feet to where they want to be.
When you come down and grab the blocks, you want to make sure that your arms are straight, they're not bent, and you want to make sure that your entire hand is over the block. Your thumb is not grabbing the block. Your thumb is actually going to help you push off the blocks. When you're standing on the block, you need to focus on the one point of entry. You know, whether that is a little closer or a little far away, that's where your hands need to enter the water. If you have a tendency like me to lift your head, if you find that point of entry, you won't overextend your head and you won't lift your head too high out of the water because you'll always be looking at that point of entry. As I get ready to go in, I've already found my spot that I'm going to enter the water in. I take a quick peek. My head goes right back in the streamline and my whole body goes in the same hole. You will never be faster in a race than when you are when you push off the wall or you push off the block. So you want to make sure that one hand is on top of the other and you're going in in a nice streamlined position. In order to get yourself to come up to the top, you want to make sure that you're not lifting your head up out of your body position, that you're lifting the back of your neck and that will help you get to the surface. As I start my kick to the surface, I don't lift my head. My head is still in line with my body. I don't lift my head at all throughout my entire kick underwater. Again, I find my point of entry. My feet drop down. I start my kick a little too soon on this one, but look at how I get the flipper effect with my feet and my ankle flexibility. This is going to get me to the top of the water a lot sooner and be able to start my stroke a lot quicker. As I break out of the water, you notice that my head isn't coming up first, but my arm, my head is still in line. The most powerful stroke of your race is right when you come out of the start. Binko turning at the 250 in front. Next we're going to work on turns, which is also another extremely important part of your race. If you're a sprinter, you know, you only get one turn, you better make it good. If you're a distance swimmer and you get 12 turns, you better make them good. The first thing that I like to think about when I'm doing a turn is I'm 6'1", and so I need to try to get around as fast as I can compared to the next person who is not so tall as me. So what I try to do is make sure that I'm not looking up at the wall. I want to make sure that I'm finding a spot on the bottom of the pool that I can look at that can help me rotate on my turns. If I'm looking up and I'm coming out of body position, it's only going to make me slower. I don't want to breathe into the turns because then that throws off my body position and I'm not diving my head down and tucking my chin into my chest, which is going to make me rotate and going to make my hips come over faster. My last stroke into the wall is a very strong stroke because this is a stroke that's going to propel me over. I want to make sure that my heels are as close to my bottom as they can be because the more closed I am, the faster the turn is going to be. When I push off the wall, I'm again streamlined in a nice tight position and I'm pushing up on my back and then I rotate to my stomach. You know, this way I'm not turning on the wall because that just takes up more time. When you push off, you're pushing off on your back and then rotating to your side. You want to take your first stroke with the hand of the hip that is closest to the bottom of the pool. That way I can rotate from side to side quicker and I'm not getting stuck underneath the water. When you push off the wall, again, it's the fastest point that you'll ever be in your race. You want to make sure you're doing everything you possibly can to get the most out of that point. As you leave the wall, you're pushing off on your back and rotating to your stomach. You don't need to do this very fast. You don't want to rush this. You're in a race, so it's going to come naturally that you're going to do it quickly, but don't rush it. You don't need to rotate to your stomach right away. As soon as you take that arm stroke, you're going to rotate right to your other side. So when I do the turn, my feet are facing upward towards the sky, and I'm pushing off the wall with my feet about hip distance apart, not too close and not too far away. 
You know, like going up for a basketball rebound, your feet are going to be hip distance apart because that's going to be the most power that you're going to get. You're not going to go up with your feet close together, and you're not going to go up for a rebound when they're really wide apart. So try to think of it as, you know, you're going for a rebound in basketball, and you're really trying to get as much power as you can possibly get. This is a teaching progression of freestyle turns. We start off with a mid-pool somersault. You lay flat and look at how my body is in its flat position. My head is looking down because I never lift my head into my turn. And as I flip, I'm bringing my knees as close as I can to my chest and flipping myself around. It's just like doing a somersault in the pool. Here we go again, I'm nice and flat, using my arms to help rotate me around. If you notice, my ankles are really close to my speedo, and my knees are really close to my chin. She uses her hands to get her hips over quickly. She skulls with her hands back. The next part of the progression is where you just do a foot turn right before you get to the wall. So you're doing the same thing that you did in the mid-pool, but you're actually stroking in and stopping right before you get to the wall. Look at the stroke with nice high elbows. Take my final breath and then I don't breathe into the wall. Do the same thing, but I'm getting a feel for where the wall is. The next part of the progression is the same thing, but your feet actually land on the wall. So you get a feel of where you should actually place your feet. Now she's going to put her feet on the wall, but not jump. The next part of the progression is when you do a flip turn, but you push off on your back. You want to get the feel of pushing off with both your feet facing the ceiling. Nice and tight and streamlined, even though I'm on my back. This is going to teach me to push off on my back and then roll through my stomach. Here we're going to show the whole turn. And now you how I roll to my side. Nice and tight and streamlined. You want to make sure when you do your turn, you place your feet hip distance apart with your toes facing the ceiling. It gives you a better push off, it gives you a stronger push off to make sure that your velocity is the strongest at this point of your race. This is a full speed turn, not breathing into the wall, dropping my head down, not looking up for the wall, keeping my head in line, and pulling with the hand of the hip that's closest to the bottom of the pool. And this is a very confident performance by BK. Every single day in practice you can work on great finishes when you're finishing a set or even when you're just practicing. You know, I've only lost one really important race by a tenth of a second. I can't even tell you how many I've won, but I do remember the ones that I've lost. You want to make sure that you're not finishing like this with your head looking at the wall. You want to make sure that you're finishing on your side with your head looking back. Look at how much longer my arm is like this than when I'm like this. When I'm on my stomach, I'm this long, but when I'm on my side, I'm this long. If you look, I take my last breath before the flags. I'm not breathing into the wall. I'm turning on my side, and my head goes to my shoulder. Nice and long, body in line, and finishing with my fingertips to the wall first.
I want to talk to you guys about the importance of strength and flexibility. Every day before practice, no matter what practice we're getting ready to do, we always do the same stretching routine for each practice. Since I've been at USC for the past nine years, my flexibility has gotten much, much better, and I feel like that's helped my swimming ability. These are a few stretches that we do every morning and every afternoon before we get in the water. You know, just light stretches, but making sure that we're warming up our shoulders, warming up our hips and our legs and our ankles, especially just something that we've worked on a lot in the past couple of years that I feel like has made me a much better swimmer. As a swimmer, you especially want to make sure that you stretch out your shoulders. These are a few shoulder exercises that we do every day before we get in the water. We also want to make sure that our legs aren't super tight, stretch out our legs, our quads, our hamstrings. Make sure that we're really getting the most out of every stretch. Make sure you're holding the stretch and you're not bouncing when you stretch. Very important, I think stretching helps prevent injuries and helps make you a better swimmer. We also want to make sure that we stretch out our ankles. Ankle flexibility is really important in swimmers, not only if you're a breaststroker, but also if you're a freestyler. It's very important. These are a few ankle stretches that we do to help stretch out our ankles. I know yoga is one of the very favorite activities that you have. Yeah. Can you talk about how it directly relates to swimming and core strength? Yoga has given me the ability to become a lot more flexible, which I think is very important. And it's given me strength in different terms than weights has. And I think that it's given me core strength. I think it's given me, you know, I'm working different types of muscles than I don't than I do in the weight room. And I think that it's given me just kind of the peace of mind. In your opinion, what's the most important things in order to be a great swimmer? You have to be strong mentally. I think belief in yourself is the ultimate, and, and no matter what you're doing, not necessarily just in swimming, but in everything. And I think that if you believe in yourself, you're gonna go a long way. I think the ability to set goals, um, the ability to say no, the ability to rely on other people, I think that's important, you know, because you're not, nobody's successful by themselves. You have to rely on the people that help you. In the physical aspect, you know, you have to be strong. Yeah, I feel like you, the strength and flexibility is a huge issue. I think that you have to have proper technique, and, you know, I think, I think that having a little bit of talent probably helps. There's probably a lot of swimmers out there that have been doing the same time for a year or two. They've been on a plateau. You've had some plateaus in your career. I've had a few, yes. <laughs> Tell us, how do you break through a plateau? I think you need to give yourself the opportunity to realize that maybe you're not doing the right thing for your body, for yourself, that maybe you should try something different. You know, in high school, I went the same time for four years, you know, and when I got to college, it was just a change of scenery and more consistent training, and I dropped, you know, three or four seconds at a time. It takes a while to find out what works for you, and when you find it, you should stick with it. But don't give up easily. You've been very patient and very perseverant. Yes, you have to be very patient. Sometimes when you know people come away from you know a meet and they're like, why wasn't I better than I was at the last meet? It's not gonna happen in two weeks. It's not gonna happen, you know, may not happen in a year, it may not happen in two years. It'll happen at the right time. Believe in yourself, believe that you've done everything you possibly can and do everything you possibly can to make yourself the best you can be. That's good advice. Thanks. <laughs>
When you take your arm stroke, you really want to make sure you rotate your hips. Your left arm is up there for balance purposes only, but you still need to rotate your hips from side to side. As you breathe, make sure you keep your head in line with your body and you're always breathing just to the side, never behind you or never in front of you. Every single arm drill is also a kicking drill, so she's going to keep a good strong kick behind her. Same thing using the right arm and notice that she's practicing the technique of her recovery, but most importantly the technique of her high elbow catch and her hip rotation. You can also do single arm drill with your arm down by your side. This is the way we like to do it. It's a more advanced way of doing it. This really helps you rotate your hips from side to side. You really have to make sure you're kicking really hard on this drill because if you don't kick hard on this drill, you'll sink. The same reason you do this drill as you do with elementary drills to work on hip rotation and to make sure you get the same feel on both arms of your body. This really accentuates the body roll. And you can see Lindsay actually exaggerates by breathing on the opposite side and rolling her opposite shoulder out of the water. As she comes back, you can see that the legs are still emphasized and she's looking at the bottom of the pool. The water actually passes over the top of her head as her line is kept from her head down to her toes. Now when you put both the single arm drills together, you do what we call four and four drill. So you go four right arm, four left arm. So after you do the single arm drills, you go into this drill. You can do this elementary style with both hands above your head, or you can also do an advanced style with one arm down by your side. This drill basically is helping you work not only your hip rotation, the exact same things we did in the single arm drill, but now you have to switch from side to side and switch your breathing patterns from side to side. Again on this drill, don't forget to kick because if you don't, you're gonna sink. And if you get out of line, it's real easy to notice because you'll be swimming from side to side instead of swimming straight. This is the elementary single arm drill, but you're practicing rotating to both sides. You go four right arm, and then four left arm. Notice the hip rotation. He keeps very good leg skill going on while she does the single arm drill. It's easy to forget that a single arm drill is also a kicking drill. You have to concentrate on it because you're thinking about your arms. When you're breathing, you breathe to the side that your arm is down by your side. It makes it a lot harder, but it also makes you keep your breathing pattern in line, keeps your head in line, and you're, again, you're always looking towards the bottom of the pool. Again, on this drill, don't forget to kick, because if you don't, you're going to sink. She goes four right and then four left with exaggerated hip rotation. Note that she's exaggerating the body roll by rotating the opposite arm that she's not using out of the water.
This is catch-up drill where you have both arms out in front and you take an arm stroke and hit your hand in front and then take another arm stroke. This is good also for body rotation and also in order to keep your stroke long. You know, when I swim freestyle, my stroke is very long and this helps me minimize my stroke count per lap. And it also helps me focus on keeping my body position in line when I'm not stroking, just by using my legs. You can see she has a great wingspan and she likes to get as much out of her stroke as possible. However, when you do this drill, it's still important to work on hip rotation and body balance. She does this drill maintaining good body balance by looking at the bottom of the pool. She gets full extension in front and full extension behind past your hips. This is catch-up drill, but using a pipe, kind of as a little prop to help us mix it up a little bit and have a little fun in practice. You use the pipe to make sure that you're actually stopping your stroke and really focusing on your body position. And make sure you're looking down at the bottom of the pool and not at the pipe, because sometimes that can be a distraction. So make sure, again, that you're rotating your hips and you're really finishing your stroke on this drill, because sometimes you get you're a little tired by doing this, and if you don't finish your stroke, you're losing the focus. This is particularly good for Lindsay because she works on getting nice and extended in the front. However, even though you're extended, you must think about having a good high elbow catch on each stroke. I like to use this drill to help me with my high elbows. When you swim freestyle, you like to have high elbows on top of the water and underneath the water. A lot of people are getting away from this where they think that swimming with straight elbows is better for them. But in my case, you know, I like to swim with a long stroke, a very long body, and sometimes it gets out of whack if I don't use my high elbows underneath the water and on top of the water to advantage. On the fingertip drag drill, she drags her fingertips right on the surface of the water close to the midline of her body, which makes her think about getting her elbows up high on the recovery, and she's trying to keep her body alignment so that her hips don't go out of line. This is really good for high elbow catch under the water. Especially if you're using a straight arm stroke, you don't want to forget to use high elbow catch underneath the water. This is where you're going to get the most power through your stroke. As you reach out, you're turning your fingertips down towards the bottom of the pool and your elbow goes high up. And you make sure that your elbow is high up the entire way. This is the anchor drill where she's really focusing on and thinking about the front part of her stroke, the catch of her stroke, pointing her fingertips toward the bottom of the pool and catching with the high elbow. This is something that I unfortunately, unfortunately had to do when I hurt my knee at World Championships in 2001. And we actually did vertical sculling in order to make my shoulders work again and actually simulating the sculling that we're doing on our stomachs, but doing it vertically. Now when you do vertical sculling, you want to make sure that you try to form a figure eight in the water. And you usually should try to get whirlpools and that makes sure that you're doing your figure eights correctly and you're doing your sculling correctly. Notice how her body's fully in line. Her head is in line with her spine. She's not looking at the water or looking at the ceiling. You can also do this sculling, turning yourself from side to side so you can simulate the fact that you're rotating your body from side to side. So you can turn your body to the right and you can turn your body to the left. 
This vertical sculling drill is a great way if you're injured to kind of get around and, and make sure that you're doing something productive. And for me, vertical sculling was very productive in my situation. This is sculling with a buoy. Her hands are like a propeller. She's practicing pitching her hands out and then together. Propulsively apart and propulsively together. You know, one of the main reasons I like to kick with the board is because my freestyle kick is one of my weaker points of my stroke. And I think kicking with the board is really hard for me to do. So the more I do it, the better I'm going to get at it. Social kicking is fun to do, and it's also good leg exercise. However, it's good if you're going to kick with the board to do most of your practice in a proper position. Proper position is using a good alignment and looking at the bottom of the pool. As her head goes down, her hips come right up to the surface. Sometimes I like to throw on a snorkel, and this way I can keep my breathing, keep my body position in line, but still be able to kick with the board, which is really, really difficult for me to do. Okay, we take body position even further on a kickboard by using a snorkel. This way, Lindsay doesn't even need to think about lifting her head to breathe. She just keeps it in the proper position, looking right at the bottom. This brings her hips right to the surface and her body into full line. We like to kick on our sides, but with our head looking down towards the bottom of the pool, because again, this helps with body position. You also want to make sure when you're doing side kicking, you're not using your upper body. You want to keep your upper body straight. You're just using your legs to do the kicking. You want to make sure that you kick from your knees, but not too much. And you also want to kick from your hips. Kicking is very hard to perfect. The body is vertically on the side with the opposite shoulder rotated. Her arm is actually out of the water as she exaggerates being on her side. When she's not breathing, she's looking at the bottom of the pool. advanced version of side kicking is using a front snorkel. This way, Lindsay doesn't need to turn her head to breathe at all. She can keep her body line and focus on the kick drill itself. You can notice on the downbeat of the kick where the knee bends and you get a flipper type action. When you do this kick drill, it's important. It's the same as side kicking. So you kick 10 kicks on one side and then take a dynamic stroke and do 10 kicks on the other side. The reason we take a powerful stroke from side to side is because when you're swimming, you're taking powerful strokes and you're not being lazy, especially in a race. Focus is on body rotation and overemphasizing. Lindsay's going to exaggerate rolling from a vertical position on the left side to a vertical position on the right side. She takes a quick breath, trying not to lose her line, and focuses on looking at the bottom of the pool. We 
you're actually kicking on your stomach in this row with your head looking down towards the bottom of the pool. You're in a nice tight streamlined position. When you take your breath, you're actually simulating the fact that you're taking your breath in your stroke. So you have to get onto your side with your arm extended and then quickly back down into the front again. Although freestyle isn't swum flat on your stomach, in this drill you kick flat on your stomach until you take your breath. And then you overemphasize your body rotation as you take a single stroke and a breath. I'm a big fan of swimming with a snorkel, even though it's a lot more difficult and the turns aren't so easy. But it really helps me think about when I'm swimming my freestyle that my hips are the first thing that rotate. Okay, this is full stroke swimming with a front mounted snorkel. Getting used to the snorkel is really hard. You have to focus a lot more on your breathing because you're so used to turning your head to breathe. The fact that you can breathe all the time is a little bit more difficult and actually takes a lot of time to learn. You know, but it's really, really important because then you can focus on not turning your head to breathe. And when you want to take a breath, you can without losing your stroke. Lindsay, I've had the pleasure of coaching you for nine years, but there's probably a lot of people out there asking, why are you still swimming? Sometimes I ask myself that same question. <laughs> but um, in the Olympics in 2000, I didn't have the meet I wanted. And I was very fortunate enough to get put on that 800 freestyle relay and to be able to win a gold medal. Swim with three other great girls that, that put in their efforts and we all were up there together. And it was wonderful. I wouldn't trade it for the world. But individually, there are things that I want to prove to the world that I can still do. And that's why I'm still swimming. I know you've had a lot of very special moments in the sport of swimming, but what do you consider your biggest accomplishment? A lot of people would probably expect me to say winning an Olympic gold medal, but I think for me, my biggest accomplishment was winning an NCAA championship in 1997. Nothing can surpass that feeling. Nobody expected it, and we did it, and you know, it's probably the happiest day of my life. That's probably my biggest accomplishment. I'll always remember that smile on you. Yeah. <laughs> you are considered one of the best, if not the best, swimmer in the world in your event, the 200 meter freestyle. Why are you better at 27? Sometimes I question that myself. The technique that I'm learning, my nutrition is better. I'm enjoying the sport so much more. I've learned so much, you know, from, from everything that's happened to me, from being in the Olympics, from being injured, from having disappointments. And I'm kind of starting now at, at you know, 27, putting it all together. Does anybody ever ask you, Lindsay, what do you want to do when you grow up? <laughs> I've been doing this for 20 years, you know, it's my life, it's my job, and it's so fun for me. And when I grow up and when I'm done swimming, I think somehow I want to work in a nonprofit organization. I'd love to do public relations, something that's, that's going to, you know, I'm going to be able to use my, what I've learned through swimming, but I'm also going to be able to give back to the community, whether it's in swimming or whether it's in some other aspect of life. Well, I've always admired you because while you have been swimming, You've always given back to younger swimmers, so I know you'll do that well. I hope so. The next part is you do a flip turn, but then you push off on your back. Oops, or not. <laughs> <laughs> the next drill is 10 is, sorry. <laughs> did, I, did I get it right? I mean, it's, when you're on your side and you're getting ready to take your first stroke, you want to take your first stroke with the arm that your hip is on the closest. Nah, I can't say it. You want to take the stroke. You want to make sure that your first stroke is with the hand that's on. The, I can't do it now when I'm rolling. Is that okay? Take your stroke with the hand of the hip that's closest to the bottom of the pool. Did you get that? I'm, okay. okay. <laughs>